especially we have about we have a class using a mobile lab in the library before and after school before school we see three to four hundred kids every day easily where they're using the computers for homework they might just be looking up last night's game scores from the NBA from a game they're hanging out with their friends they're reading a book you know it's really quite it's it's a great gathering place for a lot of people and again it provides a really important resource for all kids we talked about the problem What else? The setting, very good, where the story takes place. And we had one more thing that we talked about. Once a week, I see 33 classes. So we have early childhood, so we have th three-year-olds and four-year-olds up to the fifth graders. So we have 33 different classes that come in and usually we have the lesson, um, sometimes a story that ties in with it, try to use technology, 21st century skills, the um, problem solving and being innovative and creative with things and then we try to end in my favorite place in this whole library. It's right where we're at right now, the quiet corner. Every classroom comes in once a week and so they have 35 minutes that they're scheduled and then here we're fortunate enough that very often there'll be another half hour that we'll put behind that 35 minutes and then they can come in and we try to focus on technology with that. It might be a, a project that they're working on in the classroom that will continue here um, using the computers or whatever but so sometimes classes will be and we'll work with them for over an hour a week. Interest in reading sometimes lags in middle school. Students this age get busy with extracurricular activities and may have a difficult time finding reading materials that match their changing interests and reading abilities. The challenge then for libraries in the middle school is to provide a wide range of high interest reading materials and help students learn how to make good choices. It's important to keep students reading as there's a strong correlation between reading for pleasure and academic success. And last question, you can access the WHS Library's research databases at home if you have internet access on your computer. True or false? But how are they the same? The settings are the same, they're both in the house and outside. Are the characters the same in that there are two? two? The problem? David didn't listen, and what was the problem in this story? The dog, the dog didn't listen, so both of the problems were the same. They weren't listening. Okay, so what do we have to type in? We have to type in butterflies, don't we? I've seen a butterfly book before. Have you? Yeah. Yep, we have butterfly books. We do. Yeah, okay, all right, now we got to get this number right here, don't we? 595.78. And then let's go over to the shelf, and we're going to look for that number on the book, okay? Okay, okay, right in here, 595.78. Look at there. See, there's on the back of the book. All right, and what's that book about? Is that book about butterflies? Yeah. It is. There you go. So as a high school library, I mean, I am here to meet the curricular needs of teachers and of the research needs of students and their interests, their reading, you know, their personal interest reading and things. They want to go for personal interest searches as well. So I had kind of a two-part goal. Again, part is to serve the curriculum and part is, of course, the students and their personal interest to get them reading more. So that's my goal. So that's why part of the time I'm working with collaborating with teachers to teach research skills, to incorporate new technologies into classes. For example, I've really been working to put Animoto, which is creates videos and book trailers, and they can do that. I mean, they can create videos about anything, and it's a free, fun to use software. Um, and we've done Glogster, which is creates online posters. Our American Studies students just did a glog about the research project, and it was amazing how students who weren't that excited about doing the research paper were just absolutely in, in, enamored in this project. They spent the whole hour working on finding images and doing stuff so it's been fun to kind of help teachers incorporate technology because things change so fast. I mean you can't know about everything and so our goal is kind of to bring those 21st century skills again of incorporating technology, research skills, teaching how to cite sources and combine those with the teacher's knowledge. So that's our you know teacher part and the other part for me is getting students excited about reading and so providing 
the materials they need, helping promote those materials with book talks so they know what's available to them. Um, I have book clubs, I mean anything to get students really excited about reading because not only, I mean, a love of reading benefits them and in the, everything else in school. If they like to read, they read more, they get better at reading, and it helps in any class, it helps them further on in life. It's just, it's an amazing thing. So those are kind of my two, I think, the main purposes of a library. When people um, found out that I was going to become a librarian, their comments were, aren't you going to be bored just checking books in and out? And I thought, wow, there's a lot of people that, ju it's, it's just not knowing. If you haven't been in a library yourself, you don't realize checking books in and out is one of the last things I get to do. I don't have that opportunity. I have a fabulous assistant that does that part of it. Um, I'm really teaching um, lessons to the kids, reading lessons, literacy lessons, um, enjoying teaching them to pick books that are just right and um, finding what's new and innovative um, with we're talking about um, like the Imagine Learning program it's on the computer letting the kids know about playaways another way besides book on tape that that's kind of going out books on CD um, Kindles, Nook, Sony readers, iPods, um, the iPad touch I mean there's just so many more directions that it's going into it's not it is not the person that checks books in and out. I mean, our, our job has evolved into so much more. Um, the teachers come to us and say, okay, this is what I'm doing in my classroom. How can you help me? What can I do with this? And so it's helping them research things that will support them in working in the classroom on their standards and me and reinforcing those standards in the, in the library. So it is, it is not at all what it used to be. That's for sure. And it's not, you might have noticed, I mean, it's not, silent in in the library when people come in it's it's a place of excitement it's um, celebrations it's uh, learning it's collaborating the kids working together um, me working with the kids then the teachers so I, I just um, it's pretty much done a 360 I think I kind of look at myself as an extension of the classroom teacher uh, we collaborate with the teachers we work together on projects classroom teachers are overwhelmed with all the things that they have to do in their classrooms and cover and so if um, I look at it as if I can help them out and reinforce what they're learning in the classroom, we'd like to cover the same things that they're doing. Um, it's a proven fact that if you, you know, hear something more than 20 times, you're going to retain it a lot better than what you have if you just hear it once or twice. So we kind of work at it that way. Um, I love technology, so I like to implement technology into a lot of the things that we do here in the library. And uh, I try to help the teachers out with the technology that we have. It's fun. It can, that again, can be overwhelming for someone. And so I think the more minds that we have working on it together, uh, the better we can be. And uh, we want the kids to know that print is very important, but, and you also have to be able to read in order to work with technology, but we want the technology piece there as well because that's going to be their world. Audiobooks are an essential resource in middle schools, libraries. I've heard people question whether listening to an audiobook qualifies as real reading, and the answer to that question is absolutely. There are many benefits of using audiobooks in the classroom and with individual students. For example, listening to an audiobook exposes students to new vocabulary and models reading fluency. Struggling readers and English language learners can read and enjoy books that are perhaps above their reading level. Each audiobook is checked out with a print book, so while the students are listening to a story, they're able to follow along with the print book and can match the sounds of the words they're hearing to the printed words on the page. I've been a librarian since 1974, and so, so my career has changed a lot, and I have gone from stamping the books and, and having the cards inside the books and doing everything um, to the way we use the computers now to check out books and do things. I can remember sitting in my library, I was all by myself, when the internet got connected at the school I was at, and I thought this is going to be just, I almost cheered, I just said this is going to be the most exciting thing that has happened to us in a long, long time. And when I look at how things have changed from that day to now, it has just been unbelievable. And I just keep thinking, what's going to happen in the next five years? You know, what are we going to go to 
because things have just literally turned upside down in the library world. I mean, people still think we sh shelve books or we read all day, and I'm sorry, like, I really barely, I mean, I barely do either one of them. I never get to read during the day, um, and I don't shelve very many books. Um, but yeah, it's really changed. I think, I mean, one about just, I think, of cool technologies that you're able to incorporate, like I mentioned before. I mean, it's just exploding what you can incorporate with your students and that you need to kind of work on exploding because, I mean, it's not going away technology. We just need to continue to find different ones that you feel comfortable with and embrace and students. It, it helps with their strengths as well. And of course, you know, we're it's a technology-driven world. There's no job out there anymore, I don't think, that's not going to require to know some type of technology and so it's an important skill for our students as well and we want students no matter whether where they come from whether their parents make ten thousand dollars a year or a million that they get access to those great resources so that's really important but I think just the amazing technology that's available has changed even since I started and what kind of information is available on databases I mean now you can find all these amazing um, transcripts from radios you know all these magazine books there's just so many great sources available and of course I think the biggest change hasn't even started yet is with e-readers I mean I don't think I think all libraries are still kind of grasping about exactly where to go with e-readers, but I think they are very much a part of our future. I mean, I can see, I'm hoping in five years, kids have an e-reader or an iPad where they have their textbooks and they can check out books from the library. I'm not saying books are going away. They're still going to be here, but still that other option, I think that, but and that's one that we're just starting to see and I think we'll see huge changes in the future as well. Our library is used every minute of every day. You know, I teach my classes in here, but we also have, um, we have SES, it's a tutoring program where the kids all meet in here after school a couple nights a week. We have mentors that come in every day over lunchtime to work with our kids. We have Kids Connection that meets, and that's for families that have incarcerated parents. The kids can meet and have some time together with kids that are in the same situations, they meet. We have um, Title Tuesdays, that's what's going to be going on here in a little bit. We invite one classroom a week and they, we invite their parents to come and have lunch, eat in our library and they learn about our school, learn about what's happening. Um, so we have, and in the evenings we have family foundations where they come and help families learn about resources that are available to them during conferences. We have all of the ELL conferences and interpreters in our library and so it is really it is used all the time and like I said it's a hub of our school there's and it's not just about me being the librarian in here it's everybody uses the library here so it's it's a great community resource right here in great neighborhood <music>Very often you will find that the library is the center of the school and there's a reason for that and that's because we want to focus that the library connects with everything in the building and so when the students come in um, they usually can come in it it's bright it's comfortable chairs nice place to sit and read quietly if you want to and yet it doesn't have to be shh all the time <laughs> the way it used to be um, and we want them to be excited and if I you know when the kids come in and check out their books if I see a group of kids sitting around the table and they're all so excited about their books that just makes my day I just think wow this is just what I come to work for every day and they don't have to be quiet and they don't have to be reading to themselves they're sharing what they're seeing and that's that's what libraries are all about we share with the community that we live in when I started at Washington of course it was like everything was cream and beige and the carpet was kind of an ugly brown color and it just wasn't very friendly it kind of felt like you were walking into the doctor's office which although we love our doctor we kind of dread and don't want to spend much time there right so I wanted to really work to make the library colorful and feel you know just something that's fun a fun place to be because libraries they aren't quiet anymore they're places for people to congregate to share information to study to hang out with friends I wanted to be a, a gathering place not just for teachers but students as well and so we did a mural on the wall behind you um, about six 
five or six years ago. And so we did that to bring color to the walls and we've changed the carpet, we've had colorful chairs. And I've just, um, we have our PD2 students are actually going to paint um, the sides of all our nonfiction stands and add some color there. So we just really want to do, you know, we put lots of books on display, anything to make the library friendly and welcoming because if you don't use a library then it is a worthless thing. If, I mean it can be the most valuable place in your school or it can be a waste and I think it's a phenomenal, re a library is such a powerful resource because it gives again every student access. If your parents can't afford to buy you every newest book I want to have those books so you can read the same books everybody else says. I want you to be able to watch music videos after school if you don't have internet at home and we want that the library to just be that place where students can again immerse themselves in their interests and then also a place to study and find what they need and, and be a really a welcoming place where they feel like it's a safe place to come to. When I came into this library wanted to make it a place where not just kids wanted to come and learn but also enjoy reading and the staff too because we are centrally um, located and I call it the hub of the school I think because Teachers are constantly walking through, staff members, um, visitors from our community come through our library and I want them to see this is a place people like to be. This is where people feel that they can come and ask questions, they can come and get help, or they can come and really truly enjoy, whether it's the teachers that come down and look for lesson plan ideas or it's the kids when they get done choosing their books. It's kind of like the, the bonus at the end here, being able to come sit and get a whistle chair or a stuffed animal or a pillow. and. I mean, this is gorgeous. The pillars, the, the windows all around the sunlight coming in, or if it's snowing or raining, it's just, it's the place where you want to just snuggle up and read a good book. Graphic novels or comic books, as they're sometimes known, have exploded in popularity in the middle school in the last few years. For many years, graphic novels and comics were not taken seriously as an important format for literacy development. But there was a study that found that the average comic book introduces children to nearly twice as many new words as the average children, children's book, and more than five times as many as the average child-adult conversation. So they can not only help students develop vocabulary, but they can also help struggling readers or English language learners, as the visual cues in the book can help them understand the story. One of the things that, that have come up um, in the last few years is graphic novels and we call them comic books when we grew up and now they're called graphic novels. It's the same thing. Um, but what they're doing is they're taking a lot of old titles. Um, one of the ones that has come up is The Boxcar Children, which was an old standard that my kids read in a series. And they've made those into graphic novels now. And a lot of times what you find, and it doesn't have to be a struggling reader necessarily, but um, the kids are so focused with video games and the things that they see that pictures are really important to them and I think that's why the graphic novels have become such a big hit with the kids is they, they love seeing those colors and the, the pictures really bring out what that text is doing, um, trying to convey to them and so I think that's why a lot of boys in particular really enjoy the graphic novels. We have a program called Destiny Quest and you can go on to the, our site here at Cleveland and you pull it up and it'll tell you what the top 10 checked out books are in our school. And it's Diary of a Wimpy Kid. One, two, three, four, five. It's all of them. That's like the top books are the Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And that's all age levels. And it's really written for the older children, but the younger kids want to get that book in their hands too. And they've got family members that can read them to them or older brothers and sisters, or they can look at the pictures if it's that choice book that they want. So that's a real um, hot, um, item right now and we've got for the younger kids they do like um, Nate the Great some of the, the classic older books that have been around a long time and really whatever I read that sparks an interest if I like today I read the David Shannon books they all wanted a David Shannon book to take home last week was Mo Willems they all wanted a Mo Willems book so it's kind of how you plug it and how you sell it and just having exposure to so many books Manga, the Japanese comics, are still really popular. Um, what we have seen for trends, of course, with Twilight, supernatural stuff is very, um, it's, it's actually being produced a lot. It's still really popular. Other things that are really popular right now, zombies, are very, very popular. That's the new thing. There's just 
tons of zombie books coming out, and I didn't know I liked zombies until I've read some of the books, and there's some amazing things. Um, there are a lot of great, I mean, romances are still always really popular. Another category that's popular now is urban fiction, okay, so stories that take place in the inner city and have represent different lives of our multicultural students here at Washington High School, and those are really, really popular right now in my library. So these are all the playways that we have available for checkout in our school, and you can notice that most of them say out, except for this one that I have available. The kids come over and they pick up the balloon, they bring it over to the checkout, and this one happens to be the best Christmas pageant ever, so you can imagine why that's not checked out right now. But we put the book in with the actual playway so they can listen and they can read along with the book. And this is what the playway looks like. Inside, there's a little device that looks like this. And there are earphones that you plug into the side. And it's um, a probably a more updated book on tape, but there's no tape, there's no CD. So you plug the headphones in, put them in your ears on the back, there's a place where you push play, or you push the power on, you push play, you can listen to the story, and when your time is up for reading, you go ahead and push the play button again and it pauses it, you turn it off, you put your bookmark in the book, close it the next time you wanna read, it picks up right where you've left off. So the kids get to hear the story being read to them and they get to see the print. So this is our playways. The popular genres in middle school are ghost stories, mysteries, suspense, action adventure books, and funny books, of course. Librarians work really hard to select books that will appeal to a wide variety of interests that students have and to stay up with the latest trends in publishing. We want to have books that, connects with, with, that will connect with every student. Every year since I started, our circulation has increased. I think last year we checked out books over 60,000 times, and it's higher this year than it was last year. So, I mean, it, it, it works. You get good books. You know, I, I and Denise and Brenda, my assistants, really know about books and teachers. Our teachers at Washington are amazing at coordinating with us to find books that kids will be interested in. I mean, it, it makes a big difference and kids are really reading. They're not spending their time in reading period. Not many of them are wasting their time. They're really finding a love of reading, which is exactly what we want to have happen. I get to work with every single student in this entire building. That's something that a classroom teacher doesn't get. And I don't get that close relationship like I, do, I did as a classroom teacher, but I get all of these kids to come in here. And it's amazing how they hang on your every word when you, you get them for a short amount of time. So you can really do a lot in that 35 minutes that you have them. And then when they say, you know, I want a book about this or I want a book about that. And you get to go to the shelf and you, you can actually see them evolve as readers. I'm hoping that in the long term I can see these kids go from being three and four year olds to being 11 year old fifth graders and seeing how their reading has progressed and what interests they have and then I get to order books that I think that kids have shown an interest in and when the new books come in it's just a celebration because they get to get into those books and there's just so many exciting things coming so um, when we talked about, there was a book called My Librarian is a Camel, and talked about how different cultures, different places in the world, have different ideas of what a librarian is. Or, so I asked them, what do you expect to see when you come in here? And they're like, you, okay, and books on the shelf. But then we talked about, too, how that's changing, how, and I pulled out, and we're piloting um, all the different types of Kindles and Nooks, and so I happen to have a Nook, and I showed them that. And I said, this is a book. And so showed, and they were like in awe. And just to tell them that there's more out there in different ways. And for some kids who maybe didn't want to pick up a book and read, if they could get that nook in their hand and finish a book that way or a play away, they get that. They just are so excited about these play aways. They're going out the door like hotcakes. And if they can get that in their hand, they can finish a chapter book. Some kids that have never finished a chapter book are so excited to come down and say, I finished the book, can I have another one? And it's like, cheer, <laughs> yay! So that's, that's the best part of this job, is just being able to celebrate the kids' victories and the, the, the kids' excitement about all the adventures that they go on in these books. We're information keepers, kind of, and people need to know how to use it. And that's the one thing that I think we're finding now, especially with young children, they think the internet is the be-all to the end-all. 
and everything on it is true and everything that we find there is, is gospel. And we have to help them, you know, sort through that and, you know, pick out the, the sites that are good sites, pick out the reliable sites, pick out the things that are important to leave the other stuff behind. And that's, that's a major role that we play right now is to sort through the technology and the information on the internet and help students so that they become good consumers of the internet rather than just technology junkies you know, of sort. I actually became a librarian just because I saw how having a kid love a book could transform their life or reading the same book a kid read transform their life. When, um, for me, I was teaching English at Madison Central and there was this kid who was post a year past Columbine and he never spoke and he wore a black trench coat. I don't think he ever bathed. And he would read um, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series every day. And I couldn't get anything out of this kid and it was my first year teaching and I thought, I was desperate and I thought, well I like fantasy, I'll read this fantasy series too, maybe we can talk about it. And I read it and I really liked it and we started talking about it and this kid, he transformed. He started participating in class, he passed his classes. The next year, he was my student aide and he helped teach a class in front of his peers. I mean, it was amazing and I had another student, he'd never read a full book and then suddenly in high school he finally read the first book and he loved it and how it transformed him and then suddenly then they start reading more books and I just, I've seen so many times how it can just change a person's life finding finding that that book that you get excited about so yeah that's one of the reasons I became a librarian it's really near and dear to my heart